Hello everyone, I am Carolyn Lodish. Um, Sue, Len, and I go back a long way. We all grew up in Cleveland. We went to the same high school. So let's just say we've known each other more than 50 years. I'm so pleased to join you today in honoring them for the many miles they have ridden in my husband Jules' memory, for the awareness that those rides created and for the dollars that those rides raised to help fund ALS research. Our grandson, Zachary, uh, celebrated his bar mitzvah earlier this year. And a week before that bar mitzvah, the rabbi asked both grandmothers if we would each share in a few paragraphs, a life lesson that Zachary could carry with him. Len asked me if I would share my words with you. So here they are. Zach, you and your family chose today, April 3rd, as your bar mitzvah date. Today also would have been Grandpa Jules, Pop Pop's 76th birthday. I thought it would be appropriate to share a life lesson that can be learned by looking at how he chose to live the last years of his life. At age 48, Pop Pop was diagnosed with ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis a degenerative neuromuscular disease for which there is no cure. At the time of his diagnosis, the life expectancy was one to three years. So this diagnosis was particularly devastating. Within a few months, he had to close his medical practice. He could no longer walk unaided or swallow easily. One day a year later, he lapsed into a coma. He did awaken but at that juncture, he was told that he could choose to die or he could go on a ventilator because he could no longer breathe on his own. His mind, thankfully, remained clear and sharp. We talked and I said that if he did choose the ventilator, I would help him, but we had to be together on this going forward. And so we created our mantra. We would do the best we could for as long as we could, with as much dignity as we could muster. And we often repeated that to each other, even when he could no longer speak and had to resort to painstakingly type out the message on the computer using what was then a fairly new eye blink system. I often wondered how he could awaken each morning and face the day in so limited a condition. But as time went on, I figured it out. Each morning when he awakened, he did not dwell on what he could no longer do. He did not dwell on what had been taken away, on what he could no longer have. Instead, he focused on what he could still do, on continuing to check in with friends and family, even though it took him hours to type out his messages and his greetings. This determination allowed him to maintain contact with those he cared about, allowed him to watch his children graduate from high school, from college, from graduate school, begin their professional lives, find their life partners. Instead of that one to three year life sentence, he lived for 15 years. He even got the chance to meet his first two grandchildren, Jasper and you, Zachy. He did the best he could for as long as he could with as much dignity as he could muster. And so Zach, if you are able to hang on to that mantra, you too will meet life's challenges and will be able to hold your head high. I have no doubt whatsoever that you will succeed in doing so. Mazel tov to you, dear Zachary. We are all very proud of you today and every day. I love you, Nana. Hi, this is Shelley Gilman, and I received your email, Joan, asking for some comments about Susan and Len. I'm trying to think, uh, Susan, when did we first meet? Was it in fourth grade, fifth grade, or sixth grade at Temple Emanuel in uh, Cleveland? Um, and then I know we went through uh, Roosevelt Junior High School and Heights High School, uh, which I think was just a few short years ago. Uh, Len, I remember from a mechanical drawing class 
in uh, Roosevelt Junior High School. Uh, his lines uh, were always straight and uh, directly helpful to everyone. Um, in fact, I know that he helped me uh, getting through um, algebra uh, when we were at, uh, I think it was Roosevelt or Heights at that time. Uh, Len and Sue have always been of help to uh, everyone that they meet. Um, and they had some good instructions from their parents, uh, Len from Nate, uh, and also Susan from her mom and her siblings. So it's an honor to be able to share this uh, wonderful event with them. Bye. Dearest Len and Susan, heartiest congratulations on this well-deserved acknowledgement. With or without awards, I know what remarkable human beings you are and how privileged I am to know you. Congratulations. Hi, this is Shelley Gilman again. Uh, I had exchanged an email with Joan and I asked her if Len had ever told her the story of the lass. And she said not. So this is a story that you really need to know about Len and his imagination. Uh, there were six of us, including Len, in eighth grade who would always get together and have a card game. Uh, we would save some money uh, out of each pot, each game we got together to save for our high school uh, prom. So here we were in eighth grade, already saving for some event that was going to occur many years later. Uh, to put the money in a bank though, we needed a name. So Len came up with the name. Uh, it was to take the first letter of each of our names, Len L, and of course, you know, he went on to Wharton fame. And then there was Irwin with an I, and Irwin ultimately went on and became a practicing lawyer in New York City. Then there was Leslie with an L. Uh, he became a controller of a company in uh, North Carolina. So Len then decided we put a period after the L-I-L. -L. So then we went to Arthur. Uh, Arthur just retired as uh, a practicing physician in Los Angeles. Then there's myself, Shelley, uh, and I just retired as uh, a lawyer in Louisville. And then there's Shelley Levin. And so we had his first name. He is uh, a semi-retired uh, ophthalmologist in Hollywood, Florida. So that's the name of our ingenious group. All came together because of Len's imagination. And now you know the story of Little Ass. Bye. Hi, my name is Andrew Geronimo and I'm a researcher at the Penn State College of Medicine at the Hershey Medical Center. I met Susan and Len Lodish in the summer of 2020 when they were biking through for their 25th anniversary ride. I was really impressed with them and really grateful that they were able to take the time to meet with our team to explore the care services and the research that we're doing at the medical center, including my work on brain computer interfaces. Susan and Len, thank you for continuing to inspire us and thank you for all that you've done and continue to do. Hi everyone. I'm so happy to join you today celebrating Len and Sue's remarkable achievements in riding their tandem bike for charity. My name is John Zen. Len was my colleague at Wharton before his retirement. I was the one who set up their biking trip from Wuhan to Beijing and found a group of youngsters, perhaps one third of other age, to ride with them. Wuhan is where I went to college. The distance between the two cities is over a thousand kilometers. I remember that when I was young, I mean, really young, I felt so exhausted making the trip by train. You can imagine how impressed I was about Len and Sue covering the whole distance by bike. Through their trip, I learned something really fascinating. And you all know that Lodish is a Jewish name. You also know that uh, Ripstein, for instance, or anything ended with a Stein is probably a Jewish name. I bet you don't know that the Zen, Z-H-A-N-G, my surname, 
is also a Jewish name. Zhang is a very popular Chinese name reserved for good people like me. And there are close to 100 million people in the world today and with that surname. That is why a Chinese emperor in the 14th century conferred this good name, Zen, to a group of good people who are known today as the Kaifeng Jews. The emperor felt compelled to do this as the styles do not translate well into Chinese, do not do the full justice to the good people uh, he met. If you don't know that story, ask Lin and then Sue, or Google Kaifeng Jews, K-A-I-F-E-N-G. I hope Lin and Sue will keep on writing. One day when I'm old enough, I will join you. Can I say it was such a great pleasure and honor to meet and help Sue and Lynn with their itinerary and planning when they did their fundraiser here in South Africa. I have supported and followed them since. I think they deserve a well-earned break after their 25-year efforts. Incredible. Hello, Susan and Len Londis. They are great people. They do great things for humanity. They become a role model for solidarity to the people of the world, despite their advancing age, they are hope for ALS patients. It is a great honor for me to pedal with them in Turkey. We will never forget Susan and Len Lodis. I am so glad you are there leave. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Len since I was a first year MBA student at Wharton in the 1980s. Len was my most influential professor when I took the Wharton Reconati course. After graduating, I remained involved in Wharton Global Consulting and worked with Len until I married a Canadian and moved to Toronto. Our family has supported Len and Susan's first amazing bicycle ride for ALS from coast to coast in 1996 and their 25th bike ride and all in between. Our family eagerly looks forward to their notes from the road. In 2014, we were driving to New York City from Toronto through upstate New York at the same time as the Lotuses were riding north through upstate New York. I called Len to see if we could meet on the way for lunch. So happy it worked out and we even ended up in notes from the road. We were thrilled when Len and Susan decided to ride in Canada in 2017. The Lotuses are inspiring the next generation of riders for ALS. Michael and our sons, Matthew and Daniel, rode a portion with the Lotish family. And in the evening, we even had dinner and a visit to our store, and we designed a store flyer to get the word out about ALS fundraising and the Lotish bike ride. We are so fortunate to know Len, Susan, and the family for many years. They have always been a great inspiration, and I am so thankful that our children know them so they can be inspired by their lives and their efforts for ALS. such an honor to be making this video for my dear friends, Len and Susan. Uh, we're in Newport for my nephew's wedding and we found this bike here. Uh, it's not a tandem, which is how I met Len and Susan. So I believe it was Len and Susan's first uh, bike trip for ALS. And I was a 20 something and Len and Susan had three grown boys. Um, but on that journey, we became dear friends. I consider Len and Susan dear friends of mine. Um, we really got to know one another when about the third or fourth day, it was about uh, 115 degrees and we had a 117 mile bike ride and they invited me to join them for breakfast and then we spent the whole day on this 117 mile bike ride and we bonded over that. And we, they came to our wedding 
we've kept in touch over the years and I'm proud of you. I'm proud of everything that you've accomplished and you're both so impressive um, and I adore you. And I applaud you for your efforts for ALS. So congratulations, I love you, bye.